Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A Detroit family desperately needs your help after a car barreled through this grandmother's home. And they say drivers blowing through stop signs and speeding have been a problem for far too long. More heat, more humidity, and more storms. Wait till you see the heat index readings for tomorrow in our four zone forecast. All right, Ben, but we begin with international news out of Novi. An autopsy determining the death of NHL goalie Matisse Kivlienke uh, was the result of a fireworks accident at the home of his coach and former Red Wing Manny Legacy. Witnesses told police the goalie for the Blue Jackets fell on his way out of the hot tub and hit his head trying to evade a misfired firework. But the autopsy shows the 24 year old died from a mortar shell to the chest. Tonight, the NHL is in shock, as are his teammates. Our Mara McDonald is at the Novi Police Department with the latest. Jace, the Latvian Hockey Federation tweeted out that Kivilniuk's death isn't just a loss for hockey, it's a loss for the country of Latvia. He was the goaltender when Team Latvia shut out Team Canada earlier this year. The National Hockey League family mourns the tragic passing of Columbus Blue Jackets goaltender Matis Kivlenix. A moment of silence for Matis Kivlenix at tonight's Game 4 of the Stanley Cup Finals in Montreal. Kivlenix was at the home of his coach and former Red Wing Manny Legacy last night in Novi for a party. Police and eyewitnesses say the 24-year-old was in the hot tub when somehow a mortar-type firework tipped and fired straight at him. He took it in the chest. Obviously, last night we were under the impression from eyewitness testimony that as he was exiting the hot tub, he fell, and so the initial thought was uh, a head trauma from the fall. Um, but obviously, with the medical examiner's report, we've learned otherwise. The report says Kivliniex had a percussive injury to the chest with massive internal injuries. He was rushed to Ascension Providence, where he was pronounced dead. Matisse Kivliniex in his NHL debut. Kivliniex, or Kivi, as his teammates called him, played in the UHSL as well as in Latvia, working his way up the ranks. Tonight, NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman says the National Hockey League was saddened to learn of the sudden and tragic passing of goaltender Matisse Kivlinix. On behalf of the NHL family, we extend our deepest sympathies to his family, friends, and teammates in both the Blue Jackets organization and his native country of Latvia. Per the Novi police tonight, there is no reason to think at this point that what happened at Legacy's home is anything other than just a terrible accident. And if you look on social media platforms, you'll see the hashtag sticks out for Kivi and people putting up pictures of their hockey sticks in memory. We are in Novi. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Okay, Mara, thank you. And also tonight, the Detroit Red Wings are also sending their condolences to the Blue Jackets organization and Kivi's family. A grandmother's dining room is destroyed after a car comes barreling into her home on Detroit's east side. It happened when she was having dinner with her granddaughter and the two were missed by just mere inches. Now she's telling our Priya man she's moving because she's had enough with speeding drivers and car crashes in her neighborhood. This is what's left of the front of Alicia's home. She says drivers are always speeding and blowing through stop signs at this intersection. She bought the home a year and a half ago, invested everything she has into the property, but now she says the risk isn't worth it. There's my address. I'm a brick. <sighs> Alicia Jackson tearfully walked through the wreckage left behind. His car parts are still on the floor. She was having dinner Sunday with her granddaughter when a car came crashing into her home. That's my dining room. It is devastating. The driver narrowly missed the pair. My granddaughter started screaming and saying, oh my God, grandma, it's a car in the house. And then I started hearing people yelling and asking, is anybody there? Hello, hello. And then people just started coming in. I guess they were coming through the hole in the wall. Jackson lives on Seymour and Brock on Detroit's east side and says there's been at least a dozen crashes outside her home. People run the stop signs and they speed through here like they're on a freeway. They drive like 55 miles an hour up and down Seymour Street. But this is the first time the car ended up inside her home. Somebody hit that driver and that driver ran into my house. She says she has no choice but to move. It hurts just because people won't stop speeding. On Monday, volunteers helped gather her belongings. They just showed up 
and came to help me. And I just want to say, Mr. Virgil Smith, thank you. After investing her retirement savings into buying and renovating the land bank home, she's walking away. I've had it. I'm done. I don't want it anymore. Y'all can have it. I left this for my children and my grandchildren. And this was what you, what you left me with. Thanks for nothing. Unfortunately, Alicia does not have homeowners insurance. If you'd like to help the family has set up a GoFundMe account, we have information on clickondetroit.com. On the east side, I'm Priya Mann, local four. All right, Priya, both drivers, by the way, did stay at the scene. Detroit police are investigating that accident. All right, uh, well, our hottest day of the year so far. <laughs> and we might do it again tomorrow. Let's check in with Ben with uh, a chance to do it again. Right, Ben? Yeah, third 90 degree day in eight days, uh, guys, and we could make it for tomorrow. But temperatures today did make it to 91 to finish. A lot of spots that didn't hit the 90, still in the upper 80s. And of course, with that humidity that was out there, it felt even hotter than what the thermometer said. Wait till you see these numbers. The heat index tomorrow, 100 degrees in much of the metro area. We'll call it 101 in the city. Lots of triple digits across the south zone tomorrow, especially there in Monroe County. And if you're not in the 100 club, you're awfully close. Mid to upper 90s in the west zone. Even spots north of 59 tomorrow, feeling like the mid to upper 90s. Lakeshore locations not giving us any relief. And we do see those temperatures coming back down. Heat index closing the gap there Thursday and Friday. But we do have lots of rain in the forecast starting tomorrow. We'll check out the timing on that and see when Mother Nature will give us another break coming up in a few minutes, guys. Okay, Ben, thank you. We are hearing from a Detroit pastor and his wife after their son is killed in a jet ski accident. It happened in Chicago yesterday. Pastor Kenneth Flowers and his wife say their 27 year old son Austin was on a jet ski with his girlfriend when another jet ski rider slammed into them. They say Austin felt the waters were too rough and was heading in when it happened. We've watched things like this on My the news child. before accidents, boating accidents, jet skis. Oh, Never would have thought that this would happen to our family. Oh, they tell us police are investigating if the other jet ski rider was under the influence of alcohol or drugs. MDOT now says eastbound I-94 from Michigan Avenue to West Grand Boulevard is going to stay closed for at least another week. That stretch of road had extensive damage from last month's flooding and remained underwater for four days. The westbound lanes reopened last week. And the massive four-year project to rebuild a stretch of I-275 kicks off tomorrow morning with only one lane of 275 open in each direction between I-94 and South Huron Road. Then on Wednesday, the northbound 275 ramp to Eureka Road will close. Construction will last until late fall with the entire project expected to finish in 2024. In coronavirus news, the Delta variant remains a concern, especially for the unvaccinated and kids under 12. The chair of the American Academy of Pediatrics Committee on Infectious Diseases says family members should be fully vaccinated if they're around a child younger than 12. Officials are advising parents of kids over the age of 12 to get them vaccinated now ahead of school starting as it uh, takes about five weeks for them to be fully vaccinated. And we're expecting new numbers from the state tomorrow as they're updating COVID data only on Tuesdays and Fridays now. A Novi man charged in the January 6th siege on the U.S. Capitol will face a judge tomorrow. Several FBI tips helped identify the man as 29 year old Trevor Brown. Prosecutors say Brown posted images on its Facebook page about his involvement that day. Surveillance video also shows Brown outside a tunnel at the Capitol, according to investigators. He's the 11th Michigander charged in the attack. Paul Whelan is back in a Russian prison after spending the past three weeks at a medical facility. Last month, the Novi man complained of having a lingering cough and inflammation in his elbow from factory work. His family says he didn't receive much medical attention except for a chest and elbow x-ray. The former U.S. Marine was detained in Moscow in 2018 and was later convicted of espionage. He was sentenced to 16 years in a Russian labor camp. He has always denied the charges against him. Still ahead, it's been a deadly year so far on the Great Lakes. Coming up, we'll have the new report showing the troubling trend. There is a fire over there! A U-Haul was loaded with enough fireworks for an entire Toledo neighborhood. New tonight, the video showing the moment it catches fire.
But first, neighbors say it sounded like a bomb went off. Why it could be a while before we learn what caused this explosion in Warren. Next.